What is up guys, welcome to another video. Today we will be exploring a Viscera Aggro deck. So uh, this is something uh, I've been playing around. Also with my buddy Kraben, we actually played a few games with this and just to try out and see how it goes. So I'm sharing this with you guys. Um, so if you're interested in this deck, I'm gonna leave the link down in the description below uh, so you can have a look. Right, so what we're gonna go here is the fabdd.net. So we have the deck list open up here. Uh, once again, I'll have the deck link uh, down in the description so you guys can basically click and just uh, take a look at it. Right, so let's go through the uh, non attack action as I usually like to do. But you know what? Let's go through the attack action, then we'll go through the non attack actions. So amplify the Arc Knight, three copies of this, red. So it's gonna cost less for each rune chant we control. So usually we have one to two rune chant control due to the nature of the deck. So we are basically aiming to go wide. So uh, there's gonna be bound to be one to two rune chant. So usually we'll pay one for this. So you guys are gonna see that in a moment uh, when we talk more about the deck. So now we have the Command and Conquer. Uh, one copy of this uh, because uh, it is better to have Wound Blade cards instead of uh, the usual generic cards. So uh, then we have three copies of uh, Consuming Evolution. So this is overall a good uh, Wound Blade card with uh, four damage, and if it hits and you did deal any arcane damage or you are dealing arcane damage, they discard the card. So pretty good. So three, uh, three reds, three yellow, useful for paying uh, different costs for different attacks. Drawn to the dark dimension for the blue pitch, so we get to draw a card, and also it costs less to play. So uh, on itself, this is pretty useless, but combining it with a non-attack action that I'll be talking in a moment, it'll be pretty useful. So we have E-Strike, basically just a great card. Uh, you can see that I do not run uh, a lot of uh, generic action because we want to be able to utilize a visualize ability which only at, uh, activates when we play a rune blade card uh, so any attack action it has to serve a purpose and would rather not have uh, much generic action because it doesn't really generate any rune chant tokens each time we play it okay so um so we have e-strike here just an overall good card for uh, deck they are going aggro meet and greet uh, three copies of red uh, three copies of yellow rune flash uh, three copies of red uh, so this uh, basically has a natural go again which is pretty useful and it costs less to for each rune chain we control and then we have spell blade assault just a great card create two uh, rune chain tokens so we are playing the red one here uh, and then we have the spell blade strike blue uh, it creates one rune chain token and also another one spell blade strike a this time three copies of red okay so we are done with the attack action so let's just quickly go through the attack reaction so there's nothing special here three lunging presses just to force that one damage more or you can just use it to pitch pretty good just an overall my, one of my favorite cards to play with so plus one damage, let's say you're playing the Consuming Volition, they block uh, with their defense reaction or their card, usually cards block for three, or they just block with their defense reaction for four, Lunging Press, and they have to discard a card if you are dealing any Arcane damage. Uh, so that's pretty useful, and then the Razor Reflex, uh, once again, just a good attack reaction overall. So only uh, six copies total for attack reaction, let's go into non-attack actions. So we have become the Arc Knight, just a great card for Arc Knights. Uh, basically, uh, so we have three blue copies here. So we are going to be using that to pitch and to convert any of our um, extra attack action that we have here on hand to, into non-attack action. So we get to trigger with Sarai's ability. Or the other way around, if you have too many uh, non-attack action in your hand, you might want to play this. And basically you get whatever cards you want. And we have come to fight. So you... Um, Come to fight is basically a non-attack action. So it does activate Viscerai's ability because if you go back here and we read Viscerai's ability, you don't have to play a Rune, Black, a rune Blade non-attack action. So this is pretty good. Uh, it just uh, buffs up your attack plus 3 and you get to go again. And if you play a Rune Blade card, 
you basically create a rune chain token more on that in a bit when we jump into TTS and then we have a Morbrian Sky so just a, just a card to give our rune blade attack action go again and then this is a blue and then you notice I also play uh, three copies of red uh, just to threaten the creation of three rune chain tokens so this is useful for pitching this is just useful overall to threaten your opponent Modern Tide uh, any rune blade uh, deck is going to need Modern Tide it basically creates more rune chain token for uh, each time you create rune chain token uh, pretty self-explanatory and then we have Oath of the Arc Knight so the blue one just for pitching and then if you want to play it it still has the value of creating a rune chain token once again it's a non-attack action so you get to trigger with rise ability and then we have Oath of the Arc Knight uh, the red one this time to buff up our attack and then we get to create a rune chain token and get to go again and a yellow one you see the red one i'm just playing uh, one copy because uh, usually you want to go wide uh, so blue one is the main focus here and then we have two copies of yellow one just for the overall utility and then we have the research node here um I'm, we are still debating whether this is a good card to put in but i'm just gonna put in anyway we have a bunch of attack action that we're playing and even if we fail to hit any attack action we still get to create one rune chain token with Bristerize ability if played well and then we have nine defense reaction uh, just a, a good number to have uh, so we have three copies of it for sin three copies of reduced rune chant you can swap out the fate for sin for three yellow copies of reduced to rune chant you might want to do that so it really depends on your taste but it does block for three if the yellow one so you might want to check that out and then we have four uh, three copies of sink below uh, just a good card to cycle your hand now let's take a look at uh, our equipments then we'll talk about the weapon for a bit and then arcanized skull cap once again a good generic equipment to have a uh, alternative to this is basically the usual iron uh, helm helmet so you can play that or you have a skull cap that's good too this so this would be the main choice and then we have the spring tunic so we are not playing the skeleton here because we are going wide so uh, this is the choice to go with just to pay the resource in order to play like let's say you want to play middle greed you just want to pay extra resource to play let's say razor reflex and things like that so tunic is more useful rather than the explosive turn that you get from skeleton and then we have grasp of the arc knight so this is basically one of the main equipments for Arc Knight. You, know, you can create a Rune Chan token by paying two. And then some uh, uh, Null Rune bow, uh, Boots and also Robe for things like uh, Kano. And then we have Snapdragon Scalers just to give our attack action to go again. We are a aggro white deck anyways. Finally, we have the weapon of choice which is Reaping Blade. So for only a cost of one, you get to attack and then you are dealing 3 damage so you might want to play things like maybe like a meet and greet or maybe a consuming volition and then you uh, launch your blade so for a for a resource of 2 you are dealing a total of about 7 damage not counting the rune chance so that's pretty good so you might uh, I still think Reaping Blade is a better choice compared to Nebula because Nebula basically deals 1 damage unless you play a non-attack action and also it costs 2. So the non-attack action part for Nebula Blade is not an issue but uh, the paying for the cost of 2 is, uh, is pretty expensive. So let me just quickly search for the Nebula Blade so you guys can see what I mean. So it costs 2 to attack uh, so that's pretty expensive. And plus Reaping Blades block healing, so that's pretty good. Uh, so let's jump into TTS just to, you know, just to see, get an overall feel of the deck. Alright guys, so here we are in the Tumble Top Simulator. Have the equipment set up here, this is our deck. So let's say you start your turn, or you're having your turn with about a card, something like this. So here's some tips on uh, playing this out. So what you want to do is basically a uh, pitching the right card in the right sequence so what do i mean by this what you want to do is basically always pitch any non-attack action that is not a rune blade card 
then go with a rune blade non-attack action so let's say you pitch this you pitch the uh, lunging press here the blue one so you play come to fight and what happens now if if you were to play the Morbian sky so let's make a create a big dice here so let's say you create uh, you play the Morbian sky you get the benefit of actually creating a rune chan token but if you play it in this way you do not get that so uh, you want to remember to play any generic non-attack action card first just to activate the ability and you mean activate the effect before actually playing a rune blade card so you get the benefit of those so this is just a, a small tip to go along because it really helps by generating one rune chant token so now when any of your attacks is coming uh, now this uh, drawn to the dark dimension is reduced by one the cost and then you are basically just playing one in order to draw a card and you also get to go again uh, then this basically attacks for one and with one rune chan token but if you were to play another way around you're only dealing one damage with no rune chan token so that's it guys that's just some tips on playing a uh, rune blade just a quick one uh, thank you so much for watching do like and subscribe that really helps and see you guys in the next one